Hello, good evening and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Tony, aka Guru Mafinda. Now we've been down to the Little Farmer's Farm today and we've been potting on some French beans, dwarf French beans, the bush bean varieties. Um, I've done eight. Uh, they were getting a bit sun-kissed in the uh, polytunnel though, it's been a bit hot this week and so you've got some uh, dried up leaf curl going on. We don't want them all shriveling away to nothing so I'm potting them on and I'm, I've moved them on as well out of the fierce sun in Tiki Tunnel 1 you'll see in a minute but this is the process that we're doing this year for the dwarf French beans I've been doing a little bit of reading up on them they like a lot of nitrogen they like a rich soil so uh, we're giving them that today we're going to be reusing some old compost and reinvigorating it so that they've got a new home for our little beans enjoy boys and girls take care I'll see you in a bit now what you're looking at there are dwarf French beans some of them are getting a bit sun-kissed and dried out in here, so they need to be potted on. I only need six of them, uh, but I think I'm going to go for eight. I'm going to take eight of those that are left in there. There's about 13, I think, that have come through. So I'm going to take eight of those, and the other ones I'm going to pass on to other people, see if they want to have a go at them. Because I'm a nasty bugger, I'm going to give them these ones that have been uh, sun-kissed. <laughs> Um, but they're not doing too bad those as beans, they'll come back then but I just want to take the good specimens and pot them on I'm going to be potting them on into these pots yeah and uh, the mix that I'm going to be using is going to be a quite rich mix French beans, dwarf French beans as well, they like to have a good nitrogen rich mixture so I'm going to be adding a, adding a handful of the uh, 6x concentrated farmyard manure which is this stuff 6x into each bucket with the compost and that's how we're going to be doing the dwarf French this big tub you can see in front of you here once had potatoes in it and I think it was either last year or the year but I think it was the year before actually we grew some spuds in there and I've just been weeding it I've took all the weeds out there it's been outside all the time, but it's got the compost in it. And there's nothing wrong with the compost, it's all fine and dandy, it's been weeded. There even a couple of wayward potatoes that I found inside it that started growing again. Um, this is what we're going to be using for our, um, our mix. And all I'm going to be doing is taking handfuls of this, putting them into these buckets here. And, uh, and then adding a bit of 6x into them. The concentrated farmyard manure. And that'll be us. And we'll plant our French beans, our dwarf French beans into there. And it's like um, Tony O'Neill says at Simplify Gardening. The compost that you use when you're growing in buckets, you're growing in containers, is not just a one-use thing. If we get inside, it's a bit windy. It's not just a one-use thing. It can be... It seem it can seem like it's relatively expensive at first when you're using compost to fill up your your, your buckets and your um, your barrels and things like that. But it can always be reused, especially when you're growing you're growing your potatoes in buckets. I know I've said this before, but if you've not heard it before, you'll be spending the same as you'll probably spend in the shops if you were to buy them initially, growing them in um, in the pots like we've got here the cut flower buckets but then after that that compost can then be reused and repurposed into growing other things you just add a few more amendments into it like we're doing with the 6x and away you go again and you can do that three or four times off the same amount of compost and then what you've got left at the end of that you just chuck on the top of your beds it's a no-brainer for me it's not really expensive in fact it's very cost effective as far as we're concerned, to grow in the buckets. So yeah, give it a whirl. It's what we're doing today. So into each of those pots, a double handful of this has gone in. I'm then going to put the 6x in, which is just going to be a handful scoop, swiss it around, and then there's going to be two more double handfuls going in. And then the two more double handfuls going in at the top, another handful of that, so it's a handful for a double handful and then a handful for two double handfuls because when we plant the, um, the the young plants in we don't want as much of the fertilizer of the of the feed 
in the top part so that they get a chance to um, spread the wings and they're not overly fed at first and then when they go down and they get to be, to be bigger plants the feed is at the bottom and the roots can seek it out and, do you know what I mean? do you get that? it's less at the top initially when they were put in they were started off as seedlings in the uh, in the pots there was nothing in there was no feeding and now we're going to have a handful at the top in um, two double handfuls of, of, of compost uh, mix and then uh, yeah as it gets down to the bottom it'll be a richer mix down at the bottom that's the idea that they're not getting overly fed at first but there's going to be enough nutrition in that soil to last them the lifetimes and we'll get beans at the end that's the uh, that's the idea guys so when I say handful I just mean like that into the so it's probably going to be about what handful of 6x to 10, 10 parts one part 6x to 10 parts of the compost and then just swirled round mixed in together with the rest at the bottom and then another double scoop another double handful in the top and again it's going to be probably well it, we're going to put two double handfuls into the top and then it's going to be what, probably one part to 20 of the 6x which is going to be a good rich mix but the dwarf french beans are like a good rich nitrogen mix so that's what we're doing looks like there's uh, more spuds in here i might actually get a feed out of this bed uh, out of this drum any more? Yeah, a couple more. They're all under the ground. They, they, they've obviously sprouted, or there's been a potato in here that's sprouted. And, uh, and we're getting results off it. Tony O'Neill did it with his compost pile. Simplify gardening. He got something like 56 pounds of potatoes out of it. Just by having, uh, I think it was potato peelings that had gone into his compost pile. And he got loads of spuds out of it. It's always good so far. I like spuds. Who doesn't? Probably some people don't, do they? But we do. Any more? I don't think there's any more. I've got a bit of a feed there for myself. Yeah. So I've got them up to the top now. I'm going to work it through again. The six X. Give it a good rummage through, and that integrates it then into the soil mix. You, you want an even mix going through, but weaker at the top than it is at the bottom. I'm going to top them off just with just with the compost and, and not with the six X. But I'm not going to top them up right to the top. I'm just going to put some more in so as it's about an inch away from the top. About where that line is there on these buckets. It's not, not rocket science, guys, but uh, that's what we're doing today. And then it should get a, a good even feed then through its growing cycle. So I'll just top them off to, to where the line is and we're away. Well, they're all up to the mark for me. Got the grey ones up there, we've got the uh, sort of terracotta looking ones down here. All you've got to watch out for is when you are filling it up with the uh, compost uh, growing medium that's been outside for a couple of years like this is on our plots we've got the um, horses tails and bindweed and things like that so when we're adding them into the pots we're just picking out any uh, any wayward rhizomes or roots that we might come across and making sure that that's not going into the pots that we're going to be growing our French beans in but uh, yeah just be mindful of that just keep an eye out for that if you've got issues like um, horses tail or bindweed or other invasive grasses and things like that that you might find on your plots then you don't want that to be spread around and, and put into your new mixes so you're just going to be judicious and it's going to be windy this guys judicious with it with the compost and thoughtful, mindful of that. Deal with it as you find it. It's probably the best way of doing with, do, dealing with it. Okay. Hope you can see okay there. So we've got our beans up at the top here. I'm going to be favouring um, the unburnt beans. 
a bit of leaf dryness on the, on a couple of them. So I'm just going to take a couple of these out of the pot. So these are the dwarf French beans. These were started on the twenth, sorry, the thirtieth, thirtieth of the third, twenty-two. So these were started three weeks ago from seed from bean. So I'm going to take a couple of them out. I've already made an impression into the pot here in the middle. Um, I haven't actually got um, a pot that, 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 that is that size, but I've used that. So it's going to be a little bit bigger. So I'll have to crumble around it. But it's just to make a bit of an impression into the soil, that's all. You don't want it be, being um, too solid. You want it a bit loose around, actually. To give our roots the chance to spread the wings. These are potato roots and what have you that were in the, uh, the original compost. But if I take one out, so all I'll do is I'll squeeze the bottom a little bit and lift out. Just, just be careful when you're lifting these out. Yeah. Plop it in. Now it's not root bound or anything like that, so I've not had to loosen up the soil around the roots. I'm just going to plop it in there and then the roots will find their own way. With any luck. But there's one that's gone in, that's got a bit of curl on it. Never mind, never mind boys and girls, it'll, it'll, it'll survive I'm sure. As the new ones come through it'll, uh, it'll be alright that. But uh, I am going to favour the ones that, have, that haven't got too much of the, of the curl on it. It tends to be the bigger ones that have caught the, the sunburn. But we'll crack on with that. That one's in there, as I say, we've got the 6X in the mix. I've not put anything else in there. I've not put any mycorrhizal fungi or anything like that in. We're just going to let them crack on as nature intended, really. Although the mycorrhizal, fun, fun, micro, mycorrhizal fungi, I've got some of it here. Micro rhizal fungi helps the plant, gives it vigor, helps the roots to spread, assists in the uptake of water and other nutrients. But we'll see how these get on, surviving on their own uh, on, on their own genetics. <laughs> All right, brand new plant labels in 60 seconds. You will need acetone nail polish remover. You will need your dirty old labels, plastic labels. You will need a cotton makeup pad. Bit of acetone onto the makeup pad. You can do about 30 labels with this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And you're done. Loads of uh, labels there, all cleaned up with the acetone. Wouldn't take much. I think I, I think I used two, three. I think three. Yeah, three pads. There's about a third of a bottle of that being used. And that was about. I'm sure that was about seventy-five pence. And these these were God, they were only about fifty p for eighty. Got these three left here. I'm going to plant these into the Lady Farmer's greenhouse. I think into a Tiki Tunnel too. So yeah, it does work out cheaper to reuse the labels if you can. You could use a very fine grade emery paper and that takes it off as well. But uh, while I was passing the, I think, I think it was super drug or somewhere like that. While I was passing, I just called in and got them. You're better to reuse, aren't you, than, than waste. Okay, see you in a bit. They're all in there now, I'm just going to label them up. Um, but we know what they are, don't we? They do all French beans. In a watering tray, that's inside Tiki Tunnel 1, which is my original Tiki Tunnel. And in here, we've got them all down the side, the side of our spud buckets, which will be going out very soon. Acetone is flammable, so you've got to put it in a cool, dry place, which I will be doing. So you don't leave it in the polytunnels, that's for sure. You might get all kinds of catastrophes happening. So uh, they're in there, they're again in the watering trays. I've got just enough room there to get down the sides. And so I can get to these out of the seedlings. But yeah, they're all coming through now. Them beans are going to go out this weekend. Those uh, big long climbing beans that Mick gave us three. I'm going to do a TP for them. Sweet corn's near enough ready. 
but we're not past our frost dates as yet boys and girls so uh, I am loath to put them out really they should be going out in about two or three weeks time so we'll see how they get on in here because they don't like frost neither do the spuds but they're going to they're going to have to go out shortly because the cucumbers are going to be getting ready I might pop those cucumbers on into the bigger pots in fact I will I'll do that tomorrow well that's where we're at okay so get your beans in reuse repurpose and recycle wherever you can you might say well we're, we're using acetone and we're using uh, the cotton wool buds but it's certainly better than using the plastics all the plastic that people use you can use uh, and we are going to be doing we're going to be favoring the milk bottles so we're going to be using milk bottles and cutting them up into strips you know the plastic milk um, jugs cut them into strips and we can use them for labels as well we've got lots of tips off you guys actually in the comments below so please comment like and subscribe that's what it's all about together i think we can uh, we can get to some uh, some good good processes good practices you know nobody knows everything do they guys and that's me for today saturday today saturday the 24th i think something like that of april um i'm off to see sonic the hedgehog too not because the kids want to see it but because i want to see it. no it's it's for the kids there's that stuff that we got from uh, from big pete brilliant i'll talk to you about that tomorrow um okay take care of yourselves and each other I've been Guru Mafinda, you've been beautiful, fragrant and fantastic if you're a lady. You've been forthright, virile and masculine if you're a gentleman. And if you've been something in between, you've been something in between. Keep growing with your heads down and I'll see you all later on. Bye bye now guys. So yeah, like he said boys and girls, we love you all. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the bell notification button so you don't miss another exciting episode with me. Guru Mafinda down on the little farmer's farm. We love you all. Take care. Bye bye. God bless. See you tomorrow.